we, children of the 20s and 21st centuries, consider as the crown of evolution. We are stronger, smarter, and more inventive than some medieval people out there. The same applies to sports, because we regularly hear how another runner broke the world record and ran a split second faster, or someone threw a javelin a great distance, and this was never even dreamed of by the first participants in the Olympic Games, who did not have any thoughtful training, no sports nutrition, no doping. What if this is not true? Some ancient athletes were so strong and agile that no modern advances in science and medicine will help today's athletes reach the same heights. Hi friend, you're on the Current Top channel. How did athletes train in ancient Greece? The Greeks paid a lot of attention to their appearance. In Hellenic culture, a beautiful and athletic body was as important to a developed person as his mental ability. Therefore, any educational process included compulsory training. How did the classes go in ancient Greece? Athletes trained in special institutions called palestras and gymnasiums. In the palestras, not only training took place, but also classes in philosophy, rhetoric, and other disciplines. This is a place where both body and mind were trained. In the gymnasiums, only sports classes were held. It it is believed that it was the Greeks who invented the dumbbells. Moreover, not only light halters of the 1.22 kilograms were preserved, they were too connected to course. The Olympia Museums exhibits a 143 kilogram cobblestone with the inscription, Bibon, son of Paul, lifted me above my head with one hand. The Greeks also used livestock as a weight. Mylon of Croton, the historical prototype of the ancient hero Hercules and multiple winner of the Olympic Games, carried a calf on his shoulders as training. Every day the athlete lifted the animal, it grew, and with the endurance and strength of the Greek grew. Some of the ancient workouts seem quite exotic today. For example, athletes ran a race with horses or ran away from lions, pulled carts. And then there was a whole system of recovery. The athletes took hot and cold bath and relaxed in a steam bath. Several times a week they were doused with olive oil to heal wounds and improve skin condition. Wine was also part of the recovery procedures, but the Greeks diluted it with water. It was believed that only barbarians drink a pure drink. Athletes ate a lot of meat, especially on the eve of the competition. Despite the fact that this product was very expensive and as a rule was used during sacrifices, it was not spared for the athletes. In addition to meat, the Greeks ate bread, figs, dates, grapes and nuts. They did not use milk, it was a product for the peasants. But with almost every meal, the athletes drank wine and water. Mylon of Croton Mylon of Croton was a Greek athlete who lived in the 6th century BC. He is mentioned by Herodotus, Pender Plutarch and other authors. This is perhaps the most subtle wrestler in the history of the Olympic Games, having won seven victories in seven different games. With over a thousand victories, he has only one defeat. Moreover, the most subtle fighter of our time, Alexander Kraling, has 887 victories and two defeats. Ancient Greek authors describe him as such a strong man that an ordinary man could not even bend the little finger of Milo's outstretched hand. Also, according to the description of historians, being in the prime of life, he carried an adult cow to the Olympic Stadium to sacrifice it to Zeus. The death of the athlete was as brutal as he was. The authors write that Milo, already being an old man, tried to break a stump with his hands, which the woodcutters has previously failed to break with wedges. During this, his hands were so tightly squeezed by parts of the stump that he could not get out and became the prey of either a wild lion or a pack of wolves. Diagoras of Rhodes If the previous athlete was a wrestler, then Diagoras won the fame of the most titled boxer of antiquity. Historians of the time described Diagoras as a huge man who was as agile as a teenager, and his hands were so fast that opponents could not keep up with punches. He won the Olympics twice and never lost a fight. Diagoras practiced direct combat techniques, never dodging opponents' punches, and used his body and chin for defense. His three sons and two grandchildren have won several awards in boxing, wrestling, and pancreation at the Olympic Games, making the Diagora family the most successful in marketing 
martial arts so far. According to legend, when Diagoras was already in ripe old age, in the midst of honoring the merits of the descendants of the famous boxer, his children crowned their father's head with palm branches, lifted it on their shoulders and carried it through the enthusiastic crowd. At the same time, people in the crowd chanted, Die, Diagoras, die! You have nothing more to wish for. Only ascend to the gods during your lifetime. The old man's heart could not stand such an influx of happiness, and he died, praised by everyone. Kionis of Sparta Kionis of Sparta was one of the most gifted athletes of his time. He won six times in running at different distances, but most of all, he became famous for his jumps. According to historians, at the Olympic Games in 656 BC, Kionis jumped 7.5 meters in length, which was the record until 1952. He also won triple jump competitions covering a distance of 15.85 meters. And do not be confused by the word triple. Historians believe that athletes actually did two jumps instead of three. If so, then Kionis' record would also not have been broken until 1952. Moreover, all these jumps were made not on a soft, comfortable surface, but on a rough, rocky road. Thegan of Thasus Thegan of Thasus is one of the most subtle athletes in all sport that existed in his time. He is described as a muscular, extremely strong man who has won numerous victories at the Olympic, Pythian, Nimean and Isthmian Games. For 22 years of his sports career, he won about 1,300 war crowns, which is essentially an analogue of a gold medal in the modern Olympic Games. He also, according to an ancient Greek historian Pausanias, won 1,400 battles. Even after his death, Fegan contended to win. Pausanias describes a man who hated Fegan and constantly castigated his statue. One night, the statue could not stand such abuse and fell on the offender, sending him to the gods. Polydem from Scotus the legendary ancient Greek athlete, Pancration champion of the Olympic Games in 408 BC, was distinguished by excessive strength. He defeated his opponents with such ease as if a typical programmer was released against the professional wrestler. In an attempt to imitate the mythical hero Hercules, Polydem once killed a lion with his bare hands in Mount Olympus. The fame of his power spread far beyond the borders of Greece, reaching the Persian king Darius II. He invited Polydem to Persia and organized the fight between the Greek athlete and three of his best wrestlers. During the battle, Polydem killed two rivals, and the third escaped only because he managed to run away from the fighter's rage. Leonidas of Rhodes The ancient Greek athlete has the most victories in the Olympic Games in athletics. He won four Olympics in a row, winning and running, double running, and running in hoplet chair, deservedly becoming the best sprinter of his time. In total, he received 12 Olympic ref, analogs of a gold medal. Moreover, his record of victories lasted more than 2,000 years and was only broken in 2016 by Miles Phelps, who received the 13th Olympic gold medal this year. But here it is worth making a reservation. Leonidas of Rhodes received his medals for three individual competitions, while Michael Phelps for five. Judging by this indicator, the record of Leonidas of Rhodes has not yet been broken. Arachian. Arachian was a participant in several Olympic Games, twice becoming the Olympic champion in Pancration. According to his merits, he does not look as bright as the previous fighters, if not for one thing. He won his last victory while already dead. This happened at the Olympics in 564 BC. In a difficult position, his opponents squeezed Arachian with his legs and began to strangle him with his hands. Arachian was able to grab the opponent's big toe and twist it so that the opponent was forced to raise his hand in defeat. The crowd began to honor Arachian, but by that time he had already died of suffocation. As a result, the athlete was awarded posthumously and he is the only Olympic champion to receive gold after death. In the ancient Olympics, it was not allowed to pre-negotiate results and play giveaways. Everything else, please. Charles Yazalis, a professor of the University of Pennsylvania in the USA, who studies the history of drugs that improve physical fitness, believes that the ancient Olympians drank special infusions of herbs in wine, took hallucinogens and also abused meat, which in ancient Greece was not eaten every day, and especially the hearts and testicles of animals were eaten. Humanity has never known pure sport, he said. Roman gladiators also had not disdained hallucinogens and used strychnine, which in small doses has a stimulating effect. 
even the horses participating in chariot races did not escape doping. They were given low alcohol honey to make them run even faster. As for the primitive tribes of Africa, in the physical education of children, they used fencing on sticks, wrestling, running with a load, swinging on wines. The Bushmen tribes were distinguished by exceptional endurance. The race in the hilly terrain sometimes continued all day. Thanks to this training, hunters could chase prey for many hours and then deliver a heavy load home. Write in the comments what kind of sport you were or are doing now and what achievements do you have? It will be interesting for me to read. Thanks for your views. Bye everyone!